I'm Robin Carter, this is Kirsten Williams, Sadiq Karim, and Kara Pashal. We are first year Bachelor of Emergency Medical Care students of 2013. We will be demonstrating and discussing a variety of hand tools used in rescue. These tools that we will be demonstrating seem harmless, but are the cause for many injuries. Most important, which is applicable to all rescue situations, is personal protective equipment, commonly referred to as PPE, namely safety helmets, safety boots, safety goggles, a torch, pigskin gloves, a rescue knife and appropriate clothing depending on the specific rescue situation. Helmets provide protection to the wearer against striking their head against stationary objects, heat and flame, falling objects, molten metal splashes and accidental contact with the electrical current. Safety helmets should be equipped with a chin strap designed to not release during impact. Safety boots will protect against foot injuries from falling objects, rocks and also knocking your feet against objects. They protect against chemicals and sharp objects lying on the ground. Safety goggles provide eye protection for the eyes against unforeseen accidents. The eye protection has to cover the entire eye so that no unforeseen objects can come seep through like sand, water or any other terrain. Safety bars are hand garments meant for the protection of the wrist, hand and fingers from adverse processes or conditions. As a risk of personal protective equipment, PPE, gloves defend the user's hands from general risk. These items may protect from occupational hazards as well as recreational risk where the hands are heavily involved in the completion of a task. The usage of a glove should never fall outside the service scope provided by the manufacturer. Torches are a vital piece of equipment during a night or low light rescue mission. Without light, it is impossible to conduct a safe rescue mission. The third level is used to ensure that objects, holes, or even trampled structures are perfectly horizontal or vertical. Spirit levels have a lot of uses in every type of rescue building or hard work environment. They are simple to use and have a low percentage of faults within the actual structure. The applications are very diverse and hardly a handman can go without a spirit level. In a, triple, in a strip of metal or plastic is a so-called bu bubble centrally floating in a liquid. The water level must be located exactly in the middle of the scale, the dragonfly, so, that, so to ensure that the worker, are, the worker is accurate. Levels are available in different lengths, depending on with, which application they are needed. Usually they have length between 30 cm and 200 cm, but there are special versions with a length of more than 200 cm. In many levels, there are two dragonflies, in this case three, to, so you can check whether they the pro proper vertical or horizontal, uh, horizontal or vertical arrangement is correct. So what we have here is a seat spanner. It has a sickle shaped head with, a, with the top of the head being movable, as you can see. So basically this is used to turn nuts and bolts out of objects. The top part can move down where you can get a firm grip around the object as you can see there. And then once you have a firm grip around the object, basically you just apply force and turn at the 90 degree angle to the object itself. 
and this will cause the object to be loosened and eventually come out. This is a four pound hammer. It is ideal for applications which require non sparking conditions. It has a flat surface head that absorbs impact flows, reduces rebound, and helps eliminate married work surfaces. It has a non slip portion grip that provides comfort and safety. A G clamp is a device used to clamp wood or metal securely to a surface. In rescue, this device will be commonly used in urban search and rescue. The G clamp holds materials down safely. G clamps come in a range of sizes and are made out of steel or cast iron, making it resistant to wear. The name of the device comes from the device's shape, an upper letter G shape. At the top of the G is usually a small flat edge. At the bottom, is threaded at a hole which the large threaded screw protrudes from. One end of the screw contains a flat edge of similar size to the other at the top of the frame, and the other end usually is a small metal bar perpendicular to the screw itself, which is used to gain leverage when tightening the clamp. The clamp is tightened by turning the small tommy bar which turns the threaded rod. Occupational and health and safety concerns, if too much pressure is applied to the joint, the clamp may slip causing damage and possible injury. Materials should never be held by hand due to the materials can move and then serious injury can result. The axe is used in various scenarios and environments. It has a very sharp knife at the one end and usually made out of a wooden handle. The axe is used in a rescue environment to extract patients from closed rooms or hard to reach places. One can split doors, trees or even thin walls in two so one can get to the patient. Due to the swinging action and the long handle, a large momentum can be created and act on the object of choice with great force. It is a vital tool used in fire and search and rescue. I'll be now demonstrating how to use it. You pick it up with one hand, you slide it with another until you get a firm grip. You take it onto your shoulder and you go on the object. Okay, so what we have here is a flat tie bar. So this is used to take the nails out of objects and also to lift rooftops. So this flat part here in front with a wedge in between is placed under the nail, under the nail's head and then pushed up to lift the nail out. This is gained by the slight curvature which causes it to be leverage on the, on the body and with the correct force many things can be lifted. On the other side we have a larger curvature part which is used to put wedge under doors and when bear down onto this it will cause it to have a great amount of leverage. The longer the body of the Flat pipe are the greater leverage you will have, and when used, when a short one is used correctly, great leverage can also be achieved. I'll be explaining the measuring tape. A measuring tape is as flexible as a ruler, and it um, consists of a metal stripe with linear measurement markings on it, as you can see. It is a constant measuring tool and it's designed for uh, measuring great lengths and it's nice and flexible to go around corners and curves as it's also nice and compact to carry in your pockets or your toolkit and it's easy to carry around. The Fatmax Extreme Fugo Demolition tool is a multifunctional all-in-one tool used in fire and rescue operations. It is made out of high carbon steel for strength and durability. The Fugo Demolition tool has unique characteristics. A sledgehammer face with a hard edge for demolition purposes when breaking through walls to check for hot spots, breaking through doors or gaining entry to properties. A pry bar core 
and an extricating claw opposite the striking base that has two tiered jaws, which is perfect for popping and prying open doors and car boots. Boots with vehicle extrication. A chisel blade on the top of the extracting claw helps rescue into structure and control any obstacles while evacuating anyone inside. A fire hydrant wrench situated just below the tier tier door, door for superior leverage. A gas wrench located on the opposite side. A durable rubber grip directly on the bar gives you less slip and more control. A combined spanner wrench below the striking base for controlling hose coupling. The definition of pliers or cable cutters is a small instrument with two handles and two grasping jaws, usually long and roughened, working on a pivot, usually for holding small objects and cutting, bending or shaping wire. The bowl cutter is one of the so-called bite insertion pliers and is used for cutting metal. Usually these are around wires, bolts, pins and rivets. The bolt cutting have very favourable leverage ratios, so that the cutting of the metal part with relatively little effort is possible. Bolt cutters are available as large pliers, but also in the compact version for home use. Also, the jaws of life, which is frequently used for the fire department, is a very powerful bolt cutter, but with usually operated by hydraulics. Now there are even electrical bolt cutters that are, allow for even easier work on the market. The tools are made of rugged special steel. The handles are usually made of rubber or plastic. The cutting performance of the mo is the most important clue that it comes to performance of the bowl cutter. There are also different shapes knives for different applications. In modern design, the cutting head can be easily replaced. Another variant is the angle bolt cutter, which have angled jaws in many models. The screw allow ad adjustment of the knife. I'll be demonstrating how you use a bolt cutter. You make sure that the bolt will be fitted in between the jaws here and that the head of the bolt will be above it. With making sure that you don't cut through any wires or electrical cordings, you will bear down onto the handles and squeeze as hard as you can until the bolt is cut. Okay, so a sledgehammer is basically a larger version of a common hammer. It's a metal head with a, a wooden rod in, in it with a rubber handle at the end. Sledgehammers are used for um, extrication of patients in structural collapse because it can be used at a greater force because of the gravity that applies to it once the weight is bared down into the ground or concrete. Um, there are few rules that, that applies to a sledgehammer. Firstly, you have to have enough clearance around you to use it so that you don't strike anything or anyone by accident. And then, when maintaining a sledgehammer, you have to never leave it outside because it could denature due to environment. So basically when you use a sledgehammer, so you'll start it off the ground and you'll pick it up with one hand and slowly slide it into the second hand until you have a firm grip. And then once you swing it from the back all the way down, you never use your back, so you slide it all the way down so gravity takes its course. A hammer is a tool meant to deliver an impact to an object. The hammer is basically a force amplifier that works by converting mechanical work into kinetic energy and back. The most common uses for a hammer is to drive in nails, fit parts, forge metal and break objects apart. The hammers are often used for specific purposes so then they vary in shapes and sizes and structure. The hammer is a basic tool in many professions. So the hammer consists of a head, a handle and a claw. The basic design of a hammer is hand operated, but there are also many mechanically operated models, such as a steam hammer for heavy uses.
spades and shovels are made from steel, aluminium, iron or plastic. Most commonly spades and shovels are made from steel because it is one of the toughest metals and is lightweight. The disadvantages of iron, shovels and spades is that they are very heavy. Aluminium shovels and spades are very lightweight but they may not be strong enough to hold a lot of weight. The handles are usually made from plastic or wood on both shovels and spades. Shovels and spades are often confused with one another due to their similarities. Shovels and spades both have long handles to grip to use to scoop the dirt. Shovels and spades both have a flat top used for pushing with your foot to dig deep into the ground. They both have the same basic blade shape with a rectangular body, scooped center for holding dirt and other materials. The top handles are usually very similar with a common D-shaped handle. Both shovels and spades come in full sizes or smaller sizes. The difference between a shovel and a spade is the scooping tip. The very bottom edge of the spade is completely flat. Another difference between spades and shovels is their uses. This here is a spade. You see this is completely flat, right? This one here is a shovel. You can see the difference. Spades. Oh. The difference between a shovel and a spade is the scooping tip. The very bottom edge of the spade is completely flat. Another difference between the spades and shovels is their uses. This here is a spade, right? You can see that this is the flat tip. Here is a shovel. You can see the scoop in it. And then there's a difference. Right. Spades are used for moving dirt and other materials from one place to another. They are also used for even in the depth of a garden bed by leveling the soil. The blade can also be used to loosen the soil by pushing the blade flat into the soil. Shovels are used for digging deep into the earth. Shovels can be used to loosen soil. Shovels are also better at moving soil from one place to another because their scoop is deeper than that of a spade. Before you start using a shovel, stretch. A good shoveling technique can prevent back injuries. Stand with your feet about hip width apart for balance and keep the shovel close to your body. Bend from the knees and not your back. Tighten your stomach muscles as you lift the spade. Avoid any twisting movements and always throw the dirt in front of you and not over your shoulder. Immediately stop if you experience any shortness of breath, dizziness or chest discomfort. Now I'll be demonstrating how to use the spade. Okay. Get a nice grip on the spade. Put it into the ground. For leverage, put, place your foot onto the spade to dig it deeper into the ground. And then when you're lifting, after you've picked up the dirt, don't use your back. Use your legs and your stomach muscles to lift the dirt. Safety comes first, therefore it has to be the main concern of all the personnel involved in the rescue. As we demonstrated, all the tools have safety measures that have been put in place to protect the personnel. And one of the safety measures is that all personnel have to be trained correctly in using the hand tool. 